so much for coming today. Um, my name is David Drake, and I'm a member of the Search and Screen Committee for the Arbery of Director position. And today it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Donna Polnock, who I'm guessing uh, most, if not all of us, probably know. Um, Donna is originally from California. She got her uh, undergraduate degree at Mount Holyoke and her PhD at Stanford University and postdoc out there. And then she came here as an assistant professor in 1983 and has been here ever since and has worked her way up uh, through microbiology, I think, in immunology. And um, most recently as an associate dean in the graduate school at UW-Madison here, and for the last two years uh, has been the interim director of the Arboretum here. So uh, Donna is going to present in the next hour or so her vision for the Arboretum. And then I'll just remind everybody that tomorrow morning at 1045 in room 1111 at the biotechnology uh, building on Henry Mall, Donna will present uh, her science seminar. So with that, Donna, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> I'm going to try to use the lavalier kits. Is it enough? Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Thank you all for coming today. Um, it was great to meet and greet everybody. Thank you. Uh, I'm apologizing a little bit for the timeline. It's kind of pretty to, to think about using uh, the prairie fire motif as a, a metaphor for restoration and rejuvenation, but I really couldn't resist uh, trying to bring this in. Am I, Molly, am I doing something to make it scritchy? Okay. Um, so, prairie fire is a great metaphor for rejuvenation. I'll try to not move. <laughs> talk to you today about my vision for the Arboretum going forward and uh, try to convince you, I guess, if I continue the corny connection to the rejuvenation theme and prairie fire, that my burn plan is the best one to follow. <laughs> with that in mind, there we go. let's talk first about the qualifications for the director. I think uh, there are two key elements that are very, both very important in terms of the, the person who takes the position of director of the art first is, first is that the director needs to be experienced in the administrative tasks that will that underlie this position, and underlie the success of the art arena. Um, we'll talk a lot about that today uh, as a component of this vision um, and uh, emphasize some of the specific administrative tasks and initiatives that I think are important for the future. But it's also, it's also very, very important that the director be firmly embedded in and connected to science, um, experienced in all of the aspects of scientific uh, research, including conduct of research, grant acquisition and review. Sure. Oh, this is better. I can tell already. And maybe I can move it on. Um, be firmly embedded in and connected to science. Now, I'm going to make a bold statement at the very beginning here and then give you some support for that statement. And that is that I really feel that the director position at the Arboretum has both an institutional responsibility and a research or scientific responsibility. And that actually the balance falls more heavily on the side of the administrative component than it does on the scientific component for reasons that I'll talk to you about. But both are important, and both are important to include in what your search brings you for the, for the new director. <coughs> this is not really OK, so 
So let's talk, start with a visual. Maybe we'll get, I'll get a little bit more relaxed if we do some pictures here. Um, if we think about this complex role, so we're talking about a role that has both administrative and scientific responsibilities, we can create a sort of a multi-headed hydra kind of situation here <laughs> um, in which we can point out some specifics um, of things that the director will need to do related to, related to administrative activity. We're talking about things like personnel management, linking to the university, fundraising and fiscal management, land stewardship, working with, uh, together on land management, linking to city and other municipalities as well as the state, infrastructure management, and of course, research facilitation. And I use this word facilitation uh, intentionally and we'll come back to talk a little bit about that process. So with this in mind, we have to think about um, what aspects of the director we should be looking for in any given search. I've been very lucky to have the Arboretum in my portfolio as part of my graduate school responsibilities and very lucky to be here for this time as interim director. And um, so the how I got here is that I've uh, been, I was appointed two years ago to come in an interim position and um, take some time to get the, get the unit back on track in anticipation of recruiting a new director. So how I got here was as, virtue, as a result of my uh, position as associate dean in the graduate school. So here we have a picture of Baskin Paul. <coughs> And this is a little metric that I'll use throughout the two um, presentations that I'm giving to indicate emphasis of different aspects of a multifactorial position. So we're looking here at a heavy administration position for the grad school dean, a connection to research, not so much outreach, service, or teaching embedded in that position. So even though I was a faculty member for a number of years, and I will talk tomorrow more about that scientific part of my portfolio, um, it was the uh, grad school associate dean position that brought me to the Arboretum initially. Um, what did I bring when I came to the Arboretum? Um, I brought a number of administrative connections that I think are important and, and have helped us to move forward during these two years that I've been here. The first is that I have have been uh, fortunate to have a large number of centers in my graduate school portfolio. Um, the Arboretum is at the top here, but I also oversee the biotechnology, the Biotron, which is a um, defined environment facility, two small uh, groups, the Institute for Molecular Virology and the Laboratory of Cell and Molecular Biology, the Primate Center, the Weizmann Center, and the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery. So by being the connector between the graduate school and these major centers, um, I've been able to learn how to navigate through uh, a variety of different regulatory environments. Uh, I've learned the uh, necessary graduate school components to get jobs done. Uh, I've been able to connect to a wide network of researchers on campus as a result of the research that they do within these large centers. And I've been able to um, facilitate a large number of projects through these center activities. In addition, a major portion of my graduate school activities are related to facilitating research and graduate education, mainly finding ways to figure out how to support these important activities at the university. So. Uh, Things like research support activities, including supporting recruitment and retention efforts out in the departments, being able to be uh, mindful and in, involved in a review process uh, for vetting proposals that come to the research committee for funding through the graduate school, awarding faculty who have very meritorious careers um, with faculty awards, finding some special projects to fund, and matching grants and other activities so that investigators can complete the tasks that they need to do. In addition, there was supportive education as part of this portfolio. Graduate school, 
graduate student recruitment and funding, training grant fellowship supplementation, diversity recruitment and retention, graduate program review. Many of the initiatives that are linked to my time in the graduate school um, are connected to finding ways to get people dollars to do what they need to do. So although I would have to say upon reflection that I don't have formal training in fundraising, I think that those aspects of my grad school job have started me thinking about strategic ways that you can find dollars, that you can decide to whom to give those dollars, and you can monitor the outcomes of, of your awards. One particularly useful time for me was when I spent a year as interim director of the Primate Research Center, similar to the situation that we have here. Uh, and this gave me a very special insight and look into the processes that, that power a center and how those processes are controlled. So that includes a lot of fiscal planning, fiscal planning, talking about research direction and scope so that grants are able to be obtained, dealing with personnel issues, infrastructure management, and being a representative to the public and especially the media, which in the case of this particular center, as you can imagine, is quite important and a bit controversial. The other, the other thing I brought with me when I came to this position was something that I brought really from my scientific component, my scientific career. And that is a sort of, an, I'd call it an administrative approach, but it's really a problem-solving um, approach, I think. And it works for me, it's very straightforward, uh, and it wor works for me, I think, really because it's almost like a scientific protocol. It has specific steps that you execute and on your way to, to uh, making a decision or determining an outcome. And basically has a few very obvious steps. Assess needs and concerns, identify outcomes desired, and implement process to achieve goals. Very simple. I know it's complicated at each of those steps, but basically that was the process that I brought with me when I came here to try and um, address some of the components of change that were needed in order to be recruiting a new permanent director. Okay, so here we are. We've arrived at the time of appointment of the interim director um, at the Arboretum. And here's my metric for what I found when I came here, which was a lot of administration, a very large component of position being reflected in administrative tasks that we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, I began to learn a lot more about outreach and public engagement and the, ne the necessary tools for talking to people about what you do. Um, you know, outreach at the Primate Center was, could be called the same thing, but it was a rather more adversarial kind of situation, so I had to get used to the, to the, um, to the legion of volunteers that we have here to, do, to help bring information to the public, the naturalists, the, the um, uh, other components of the unit that make it work. <clears throat> Very little service in that classic faculty sense. More education, again, public engagement and outreach. And a continuing tie to research, so the, the the need for thinking about the scientific component of what the Arboretum does. The focus of my effort during the time here was on some areas that needed attention, including administrative structure, staff vacancies. Uh, we had a number of vacant positions at the time I came on board. Uh, budget uncertainties, uh, concerns about managing the budget and, and determining where we were in our budget process, and uh, generally increasing the positive aspects of the work environment. And I'm not, I'm not going to talk in detail about these things. I just wanted to mention them as examples of the, the types of components that are a big part of the life here at the Arboretum. 
um, including needing a, an effective in, in administrative structure, being able to be at full capacity in terms of the staff that you have, since the staff is very small in size overall, um, being sure uh, what your budget needs are and where your budget is coming from, and being sure that you have the right work environment so that everyone can thrive in terms of doing what they need to do. So here we are back at the director's um, metric or, or uh, visual to refresh ourselves about the idea of the multiple components of the arboretum that actually need to be addressed on a day-to-day -day basis, essentially, in this environment. The, the, the uh, focus of all of these activities revolves around a couple of continuing characteristics, which are close to what we were talking about when we talked about things that were um, part of what we worked on when I first came. So it's, it's always about the funding. It's always about the public outreach and public engagement. It's always about being able to, to manage the land that we have and have stewardship for the land. It's about staying connected to the university and to the city and state around us and making sure that the infrastructure supports all the things that we do. So I thought maybe it would be worth taking some time to look at some of the aspects of that that are an important part of what the director does. So let's start with land stewardship. Um, we have uh, a number of different components related to that, whether it's the type of land management that we do, the constraints on burning in our area, the invasive species that are coming in, being pulled out here, uh, and the component of support that we get from our volunteer um, corps. Personnel management, field staff, never enough people, never enough time, and maybe too many meetings. Um, and here a picture uh, of being managed, of managing individuals who um, may have a full-time job in a part-time appointment, who interact with the public and need time and energy and support to do what they do best. A link to the university, Bascom Hall again, but it's really a link to campus departments, to programs, to individual investigators, and mining those contacts on a consistent basis so that they bring benefits back to the arboretum. Public engagement. This is something that I've learned a lot about since I've been here. And, uh, outreach uh, can be under this umbrella. And thinking about the different components of use of the arboretum, how to communicate to individuals uh, what we do here and what we provide and what we don't provide. Um, we have horticultural areas, we have natural areas, we have different seasons of the year, and we're coordinating and interacting with people at all these different times um, during the seasons. A big one that we'll talk a little bit more about is fundraising and fiscal management, and this is a very important component of the administrative portfolio of the director. So um, we are in contact with the University of Wisconsin Foundation, but because we are a small unit, uh, small in size, and uh, without any degree programs, any faculty, or any major university connections in that educational way, we don't benefit much from the foundation activities. So it's difficult for us to find enough, um, find the best ways to gather the money and the funding that we need. One very important arm of this activity that we, um, that we value very much is our connection to the Friends of the Arboretum. This is the, a slide from their plant sale and a slide from their website. They are big connectors for us to our 
uh, external stakeholders, and they are part of our fundraising portfolio. Infrastructure management, a lot of this takes time, making sure that things keep running. A lot of it is related to something we'll come back to talk about in a moment, which is inundation from surrounding areas and from extreme events. And last but certainly not least, research facilitation. So we have monitoring projects. We have, um, I believe in this case, people seeking mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, here's Bruce Allison, who's doing some uh, activities measuring uh, components of tree growth and um, activity. And these are things that are highlighted very much as part of our mission but which we connect to, as we'll see in a moment, um, in, uh, I think we could do a better job of connecting to the individuals who are bringing these research projects to the Arboretum. So, having reached a point, the end of the interim appointment, where um, ex uh, a lot of the incoming activities have been taken care of, and things are settling down. It's time to move to the next phase of, of administration. And the one thing that has, I've learned, uh, I've learned many things um, in, at the Arboretum. I've learned um, in terms of some of the activities related to the staff vacancies, I've learned that the HR processes have far more problems and constraints <laughs> than I had fully understood. So that was something I learned a lot about. But the other things I learned about the Arboretum are that um, the staff, although the staff size is small and it's a relatively small unit, the budgetary aspects are very complex and, uh, and very challenging. And the resources that we have available are really not enough to make us thrive. Um, I've also learned that the, although the Arboretum is a very small unit, it has many um, facets to its mission and vision, and that individuals who value the Arboretum all use a different lens to see what it is that the Arboretum is. And I think that this um, interesting, uh, we, we fall somewhere in terms of our persona between a nonprofit organization and a university department. And in some cases, people see us as, a, as akin to or very much like a, a not-for-profit conservancy organization. And they expect uh, activities that uh, do conservation for public good. Some people approaching the horticulture, horticultural areas see us as an area for family time and uh, activities that bring uh, people to view parts of the horticulture, horticultural garden. Uh, if you're a recreational user, you think of us as a place where you can ski, and you wonder why we don't groom our ski trails more effectively. And in a small majority, you think of us as a research facility and ask about um, the research productivity that we have and why we don't, uh, aren't able to um, you know, use some of that research activity to help us take care of the activities on the land. So it seems to me that it's a good time, in terms of thinking about the vision of the Arboretum, to think about how we might handle that uh, duality of purpose that is part of, what the, of the public perception. And it seems to me that one approach that could be successful is to maybe ask ourselves the question, what is the Arboretum? And try to identify a specific um, perspective, a, pers a, a specific uh, activity that we would use to reach out to people with a singular mission, a singular message, to uh, allow them to understand better what we do and perhaps provide some uh, support for our activities. Um, so what is the Arbery? And again, we have some examples of di what different people perceive the Arboretum is about. 
As I was reminded at Madison Reed's Leopold on Saturday, the original vision was this one that, in a nutshell, the function of the Arboretum is to provide a re reconstructed sample of old Wisconsin to serve as a benchmark, starting point, and a long and laborious job of building a permanent and mutually beneficial relationship between civilized men and civilized landscape. So that's the original vision, if you will. And that one still stands, but perhaps there's more that we can add to this. Here's another view of how people think about the Arboretum. Sometimes people like the fact that we have, we are in a um, wild land uh, in the middle of Madison, 1,200 acres. We have diverse landscape units, and some people value those in different ways. We are related to departments at UW-Madison, so we're connected and we're thought of at, in the university context. Um, we have outlying properties, uh, acres elsewhere in Wisconsin that we use for teaching and research purposes. And so even when you think in the context of what we provide, there's a duality, more than a duality, there's a, a, a version of what we are that is, in, that is specific to each person, to each individual. I think what we are, and when I when I had a time when I had time to consider this, is a living laboratory environment. Um, really, we're a living, breathing entity. We have all components of the biological universe, and we have another component that we can't escape, and that is that we're surrounded by an uncompromising urban environment. So I think that it, developing our major themes, whether it be fundraising, outreach, public engagement, research facilitation, infrastructure management, and so on, around a theme that we can consistently present, a vision, not a vision, it's not a vision, it's not a mission, it's the, our description of what it is we can do and what it is we perhaps cannot do, so that people can understand a little bit more about how we make our decisions and and what we need to do. So the core vision, getting back to the rejuvenation theme, is that we're maybe at a time where we should think about rejuvenating our public image using this concept of the Arboretum as a living <coughs> laboratory environment. Now, it's not that far outside the box. As you saw, the original vision essentially talks about the same thing. I'm just thinking about moving it into a more contemporary iteration and thinking about how we could deal with the aspects of management that we see on that multifaceted slide um, initially in using a single thematic approach and bringing that emphasis to our decision making about all the components of choice that we have in any given day for any given process. There are lots of, of components of this. We have, of course, our um, research areas. We have public initiated citizen science monitoring projects. We have our horticultural areas. We have a vast array of things that could be united under this theme of the living laboratory environment a talking point, if you will, especially for interacting with the public. So as I stressed quite a few times, and uh, hopefully uh, it, it's beginning to make some sense to people, um, the major challenges for the Arboretum Director in terms of what needs to be addressed fall continuously into four categories, basically. We need a solid financial foundation. We can't manage the land. We can't support the research. We can't do the outreach. We can't print the brochures. Unless we have the dollars um, to do that, we need to hire people. We need to support students. And that's a, a key challenge, to develop this as a solid financial foundation. 
We need to connect the Arboretum with all of our various stakeholders, university, city, and state. And again, I think we have um, occasionally difficulties in communicating with some of these stakeholders because it isn't clear to them how we fit into the picture. Are we a nonprofit organization? No, we're part of the university. Are we a research facility? Yes, but we're a research facility outside a normal laboratory and off campus. Are we a recreational facility? Not really, but we do value the people who value us and come here to enjoy recreational opportunities. Um, so connecting is, I think, very important in moving forward with all of these different aspects of our future. Foster a creative research environment. We have good research going on here. Um, much of it is what I term somewhat passive, um, because that's the situation where an individual wants to use our property, use our location, and use our, what we have available, um, applies for a permit, gets the permit, does the work, goes away, publishes a paper, never really connects with the Arboretum. That's not always true, but it can be true. And in that way, we don't benefit from that interaction in a very meaningful way. We don't encounter the students, we don't see the data, we don't um, get information that we can use for activities. Now, of course, that's not true of the situation, for example, uh, in Joy's case as the Leopold professor where there's lots of research going on that we hear a lot about and is probably the, the most important in terms of getting us information. But there are a large number of people who, who are not connected to the Arboretum, although they find it to be an important component for their work. And designing a roadmap for the future, of course, the next three to five years is probably going to be an important period of time following on this transition. And it will be a time when um, there are going to be changes at the university level, when state resources are only going to get more scarce than they are now. And so we have to think about um, making sure that a roadmap that we design uh, is based on uh, a solid foundation significant connections that we can mine and depend on, and a creative research environment that brings us um, information that we can use to maintain the Arboretum in the way that it needs to be maintained. So let's take a little bit of a look at um, where we are in in things that are going on at the Arboretum in these four major areas, so we're talking about fundraising, we're talking about connections and outreach, we're talking about uh, research and the future activities. See where we are, see how, what we might propose, and I'm just actually thinking about ideas here, thinking of ways we could go that would fit with the living laboratory theme and would be a change for us in terms of the interactive nature that we would have with, and with, with our stakeholders, with the people who come to visit, with the people who stay with us. So part of the core vision would be definitely to increase the Arboretum's fiscal base. Um, if we think about it, our current budget is about 1.2 million. It's been fairly static for a number of years. Um, and a good portion of that comes from the state, but well, over 30% of it comes through our uh, endowment accounts at the UW Foundation. So this is a very uh, perilous sort of situation where in the, the support that you need for the staff that do all of the work that keeps the place running um, comes from an entity where resources are growing more scarce. So the future holds a very important need for understanding that any change that we want to make, any increase in staff, any um, ability to do more research, to offer more opportunities, will come at a cost that must be found outside of the university and state um, environments. 
just as an interesting point, we have a really complicated financial portfolio in which we have 51 accounts at UW Foundation. Each of them, in most cases, not exclusively, but in most cases, with a specific intent attached to them. So we are constantly matching donor requests and intents to provide this portion of our budget. The other here um, are contributions that come through the graduate school, through the Friends of the Arboretum, uh, and uh, a few other um, random types of contributions, not random, uh, I should say, including <coughs> revenue that we generate by renting out space for activities in the Arboretum. So fundraising is critical to the survival of the UW Arboretum, and that's going to be absolutely an absolutely critical activity for the director. So in each of these cases, I'll try to see, say what I see as the role for the director. In this case, the role for the director is huge. It's going to be a long-term investment in, um, in my case, learning a little bit about fundraising, effective fundraising, and then maintaining that activity over periods of time as you connect to people using their lens, but the living laboratory theme, and ask them to participate in ensuring the Arboretum's future. One of the things that I worry the most about is support for land management and land stewardship. Um, we, uh, we have, as we said, properties here and at outlying areas, all of which need ten tending. And um, what we decided to do this year, and it's just underway in, in terms of the planning, is to start a fundraising campaign that will support land care. And at the peril of being too early in the process, we've taken an idea that Mark Wagner had and thought about having this campaign be in, be in, have as its tagline forever. This tagline came to Mark actually when he was at a Friends of the Arboretum meeting when there was a discussion about why people love the Arboretum so much, but often enjoy it without contributing to our mission or vision in a financial way. And one of the Friends of the Arboretum um, members said, it's because they think the Arboretum is going to be here forever. But it might not be if we don't take care. So we're very excited about this campaign. We've had a quiet phase over the past um, six months, and we've done pretty well thanks to an unexpected estate gift. Uh, and we're about to launch a more active campaign in June. So fundraising, huge on the landscape for the period. And this was my thing to point out, the connection to the Friends of the Arboretum, and also the possibility of their ability to leverage our connections to our neighborhood and public stakeholders. Um, there, are num there are many people who are friends of the Arboretum because they value the Arboretum, and uh, we are going to be working with the friends to make sure that we keep those people informed, give them the information about what we're doing in these various areas of research and land management, and hope that, that in return they will be enga more engaged with us um, going forward. In addition, um, we're <coughs> hoping to complete the campaign for a permanent curator for Longenecker Garden. So Longenecker Garden is our horticultural area, and as we know, it's a very important component of um, why people come to the Arboretum. After many years, 44 years, I think, as uh, Emeritus Director of the um, uh, Longenecker Garden, Ed Hasselkus is, reti is really retiring this time. Uh, and for the first time, the curator of the horticultural garden will be a member of the Arboretum staff rather than a faculty member in horticulture. So we have an opportunity here if we can endow a position to, although we can never replace it, to bring in the next person, to add to our land care staff, to increase the attention to the horticultural area, and to use it in our fundraising efforts. Okay, land care. This is a map that Brad prepared some time ago, which basically talks about 
a work plan um, for the, I think, 2013 year um, and highlights what's going on and what's happening. My favorite one on this slide when I looked at it again is the visitor center deck, which actually finally did get finished, which is a project we started quite some time ago. Um, but it points out that we have stormwater activities, we have fire lane regrading that we're hoping will happen. We'll come back to that a little bit. A bike path possibility uh, connecting to Fitchburg, um, the WHA tower reconstruction, which actually happened in 2008. So where are disturbances on our property? They are all around. And that highlights the um, activities that are connected to the living laboratory surrounded by the urban environment. So we're at the nat natural urban interface. And this is what we should focus on. We should, we should, this is something that we can benefit from in terms of learning, but we can also benefit from in, ter in terms of giving information. The direct, it'll be very important for the director to be connected to the needs for land care. We're developing a wish list. We're trying to let people know what it is we need to do the work that everyone expects we will do. One of the lenses that people have is a lens um, from people who have either an academic or a spiritual com uh, connection to the Arboretum and who wonder why we don't do more in terms of land care. And I think we need to reach out to those people we need to let them know why and what the constraints are and ask them to participate, ask them to help us. And two things that um, have come to mind in terms of new initiatives that we might bring in are to use two processes um, that I've highlighted here just by this little um, text. This is a picture of Mike Keeley, who uh, was a graduate student here and now, uh, now has gone on to own a business that, um, that we have hired, uh, contracted with, actually to do some of the brush mower control, invasive control that you've seen at several locations in the Arboretum. So um, I think this picture is probably pretty old. Now this is a picture of him when he was at the Arboretum as a student. He has a connection to us and We've been learning a lot from those brush control experiments that we've been doing uh, about different ways of getting restoration started and getting it quickly underway by removing invasives in a very major way. But I, I wonder what Mike Healy is learning when he comes and does the projects on our land. I think we have a large number of practitioners who, are, um, who have a connection to the Arboretum and we need to connect with them. We need to ask them what they're doing and what things we might be able to take for elements that we want to do on our own land. Another idea is one that I gathered at actually at the SCR meeting um, by hearing Chris Helzer from the Nature Conservancy talk about a process that he called peer review. So it's connected to this practitioner feedback. It's asking people who have an interest in the Arboretum but no stake in it in terms of being a staff member or being a responsible for any aspect of it, to give us a peer review of how we're doing and provide us with some feedback about how we might do things differently or how we might reprioritize our schedules so we can, um, we can set specific agendas and initiatives and evaluate the outcomes in a, in a straightforward and meaningful way. A lot of this centers around a revision of a major management plan called the Klein Plan, which had been completed just before I started as interim director, but provides us with an opportunity to say, we have a specific plan, we know what we need to do, so kind of getting back to my protocol strategy, assess what we need to do, figure out how to do it, get advice from our peers and our um, representatives, and develop a plan to get those revisions and the changes associated with that plan revision completed. In addition, we can connect to students. This is a picture of David Lubel during a time when there was considerable, um, it was an extreme water event. Uh, and 
it's just an example of a project that he has suggested for a biological sciences engineering student, which involves um, dealing with some issues of stormwater entry into Green Prairie, Green Trap, um, an area that has has been inundated by urban entry, entry of urban stormwater, and now needs remediation. And perhaps we can find a way to at least physically direct some water away from that site um, as we uh, co cooperate with Fitchburg to change some aspects of this component of the, of the area. But student projects can be very valuable to us. We're, uh, we, we appreciate student projects, but I think we should be recruiting student projects. We should be recruiting them along the theme that we have this urban natural interface. We have field sites available for research. We have projects that we would like to have done, and we need to recruit people who are interested in doing those projects. This is a just a, uh, a page from a PowerPoint that Brad Herrick sent me about a new project that's starting up to do dragonfly monitoring. And I put it here in between the land management discussion and the discussion about uh, outreach and education because I think this is also a very interesting possibility for a new initiative, for new connections in terms of outreach, public education, and hopefully in terms of research, that the Arboretum is perfect for. Um, when we think about the living laboratory, we don't have any disciplinary constraints. We can, we can take on projects in all kinds of areas. So the possibility is really endless. But I think the difficulty for researchers in some cases is that they, they cannot gather enough data to um, to either think about putting a grant in, or to get a successful publication, or to have a completed student project and thesis. And by leveraging our wide array of volunteers and trained naturalists and guides as a citizen science core that we could offer, we might be able to connect to research projects in a much more defined way by allowing individual by contributing to data collection, which I think is a very intriguing idea. We're doing some very basic citizen monitoring things here, starting um, having to do with this project that's coming on board this year and a project that's underway about bumblebee monitoring um, and pollinators. And we have connected with uh, Claudio Breton in entomology, who is interested also in bumblebees numbers and the effects of agricultural land care practices on pollinator survival and efficacy. And he is interested in using the Arboretum Citizen Science Core as a means to get more information for his project. And I think this could be the start of something that's a very um, good fit for the Arboretum and brings in aspects of student education, it brings in aspects of volunteer activity, and it brings in the research component. Outreach and education, obviously very important, and again, an area like fundraising where I think the director can help by being um, the face of the Arboretum. There are lots of activities here. We have a fabulous outreach um, group, and they are very successful. We have activities um, in, for children, especially uh, developing the land ethic early. Uh, uh, and having them understand the importance of what we do. We have activities uh, where experts will provide information um, about what's going on. People take guided walks and tours and get information from that perspective. Uh, and it's a very vibrant and important part of the art reading. Signage is also part of outreach. And we have many, we're, we've been through many different phases of sign development, and we're about to enter a, a, a new phase that has to do with directional uh, signs. These are all ways of educating people. So for people to understand, again, people being able to understand what it is we do and 
uh, what we can do and what we can't do in response to their um, concerns and, and their pressures. We need some dollars to support these projects. We have a very active um, uh, uh, EPS unit that's very successful at leveraging dollars for, for training and for outreach. We need to do more of that, and we need to connect to um, the individuals in as many ways as we can. So, back to the director's complex role. So, what I, what I hope I've been able to emphasize is there are a large number of administrative tasks all of them very connected to what the Arboretum does and what it needs to do to be successful. Um, and the array of these administrative tasks is very broad. Um, the research component is something I'll talk more about in the talk tomorrow. But I think um, one important component of this um, that is a very a unique activity or a unique perspective that the Arboretum has is that we do have the opportunity to form a team in terms of promoting the research agenda. So that's the team that works together, the Arboretum director, providing a lot of the institutional responsibilities and making sure that uh, fundraising is, is successful, infrastructure still standing, <laughs> land stewardship is taken care of, and the Aldo Leopold Professor Research Director position, which brings the ability to think about what components of research we want to recruit, who should we bring, who should we invite to be part of our research enterprise, how can we, how can we connect better to campus in terms of research activities by using our theme of, we're a living laboratory, at the urban natu natural interface. We have these specific problems. We have stormwater input. We have invasive species control, whether plant or animal. We have um, constraints on size. We have uh, the ability to use our horticultural area for research as to leverage some of the natural area activities. And I think that team can be very effective. I guess the unspeakable question in a way is, does the individual who's the director need to be a restoration ecologist or a conservationist in order to be successful? And um, my answer to that is no. I think, as I said at the beginning, the person has to be in fully embedded in science. They have to be a scientist. I consider myself to be a scientist. They have to know how to evaluate proposals. They have to know how to um, bring uh, in new initiatives to start projects, to facilitate collaborations. Uh, but the, I don't feel that they need to be the uh, only subject matter expert in the room when evaluating research opportunities. So I think that uh, bringing the team together and using the combination of the two positions can reach a perfect blend of making sure that the infrastructure continues, the funding is available, the public gets the information they need, um, the outreach continues, the infrastructure stands, and the research goes on. Some of it is, is beneficial to us, and some of it is less related, but the more we re positively recruit, the more connected type of research we can, we can find. I think one thing that Madison is famous for, the Arboretum is famous for, is the um, idea of adaptive management. And I see that as really uh, key for the future in terms of how we can manage our land. So this is a combinate where there's a combination of information from the practical and the scientific. There's an ability to um, use science to do experiments on specific topics and to use the information that's gained in a practical way to make changes in land care practices. 
And so I think this component of the Arboretum is extremely important. And the one thing I would hope to see in the time going forward is a better way to connect this activity um, more frequently, more directly, and perhaps in a management use-inspired kind of perspective to what the Arbor Arboretum does and what it needs to do. So we have a living laboratory. We have all of our iconic um, areas. We have all of the flora and fauna that inhabit the living laboratory. And I think that if we take time to think about how to present ourselves to the public, we will be um, more successful in satisfying them. So everybody loves the Arboretum, but not everyone is satisfied with what's happening at the Arboretum. I think we need to be more intentional in the, about talking about that, and the director is extremely important for that, being that public face. Um, and we have the additional component of, again, I'm gonna say the urban, the natural urban interface, which we, which is something that's not a positive for us in any way, but which I think if we can embrace our, that location and use it as a way to recruit activities that can help solve those problems for us and for other groups, this will be a, a good compromise in the face of um, encroachment. I apologize to people who uh, weren't able to be shown by picture here, and I apologize to Susan Kilmer, whose hair looks a lot different now than it did in that picture that I found. <laughs> so, um, I was very fortunate when I came on board to have, um, to, to have the, I think, strong cooperation of all the people who were here. We functioned very well as a team during the interim period, and I'm, I'm very grateful for the information that they have shared and are sharing with me about what we need here at the Arboretum. I really think that the people, staff here, the volunteers, the people who are connected are the secret to success for the Arboretum. We need to leverage those individuals, uh, but we need to give them a way to um, talk to people about what we do with a uniform voice so that people understand where we're headed for the next five years, what our goals are, what our land management goals are, what our, our long-term goals are and that they feel that they have some commitment to those goals as well. I just want to thank all the members of the Arboretum family for their support and dedication, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Possibilities and get you your reactions. Uh, what about experimental plantings to study climate change, say in the horticultural areas? I was say maybe I didn't need to, but I probably should. I think that's that kind of thing is a great idea. And I mentioned the shift in leadership in the in terms of the curator position, and I think that will make a big difference. Um, the horticulture connection, from what I understand, in the past has been through uh, the horticulture department and the needs they had for training, and also the connection essentially to the green industry, so that uh, species testing, uh, longevity, uh, if you have, uh, if we can find an emerald ash borer resistant uh, species, but I think it's very, I think it's very important to start to change that perspective a little bit and have the person who is connected to the horticulture area be also well informed about restoration and restoration ecology so that they can start to um, provide some information about 
uh, options for people in a, in a different way, not just the hardiness of a particular species or the local nature of a particular tree, but uh, something that blends in more with the natural area. And having plantings in that garden would be a possible outcome there. Okay. It is a, it is a very precious resource for people, and they have very you know that's that, that's the thing with the arboretum. They have very specific memories that are often attached. So we'd have to be thoughtful about how we would bring that in, so that we could um, we could manage the public reaction. Yeah. But we have a tiny little bit maybe of something that bridges the two worlds: our natural prairie area and the horticultural land, that's the native plant garden, which I didn't have an opportunity to talk very much about, but is a very important public outreach component and could be an interesting research site in terms of the trend as a transition zone or transition activity. So let me follow up just a little bit here. Given that the state only provides half the budget for the area, and the need to raise funds. Um, should we contemplate the need or opportunity for more public engagement, uh, more art shows, music in the Arboretum plays? That's a, a really, uh, that's a question that we have a lot, but th something that we talk about a lot here. And I would say uh, it's a conversation in progress. In general, I think we are part of the university. And we need to respect that as part of the university, we have the, the pressure on us to have research performance, um, intellectual engagement, uh, student opportunities, and we have to, we have to honor that. Sure. And but all those things go on at the university. True. Uh, in areas where maybe there isn't so much of an emphasis on um, information gathering or so much of an emphasis on aspects actually of a discipline and, a, and an activity. Right. But the um, algorithm does get in income, some income from races or weddings or events like that, is that true? We rarely, we don't have weddings here, um, and we rarely get revenue from the races. The connecting to the recreational community is uh, very difficult for us, even though they are one of our heaviest users. So that would be a prime target for information and fundraising both uh, in, in terms of that. The other thing to think about is um, it's, a, it's a balance. Um, and, and that's why I talked about this in terms of focusing on a particular theme, I guess, of the living laboratory. To start to define clearly what it is we don't want to do, what it is we do want to do very much, and, and why? Why would we, why we make that choice or that distinction? And having these activities, uh, the, the discussion about activities is part of that discussion, I think. Do we want to try to raise money by compromising some of our time? You know, we, we have to think about capacity for staff, we have to think about managing the effects of those large events, and especially in the outdoor areas. Or do we want to just say, that's not something that we do. Allen Centennial Garden can do that, and Oldbrook Garden can do that, but we don't do that. And I think that we just need to, you know, that's what we've decided at this point, and I think it's a comfortable decision, but you could think about it. So we're not going to see a cafe or bar off? No, although many, 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 many people would like a cafe. Many people, they would even just like it if we put one of the large carafes out that had coffee in it so that when they come in to the visitor center they have something to do. So maybe we can make a compromise there at some point in, in honoring that or, or providing that for them. You know, what I thought you were going to ask me, one thing I forgot to mention when I was highlighting the land management component at the end, I thought you were going to ask me about whether we should consider selling some of our outlying properties to, get, to try to get revenue. Another good question. And uh, I want to, I, I have to say that I, I, I can't see that we should ever lose more land that we have now preserved for conservation and restoration purposes. Even though it's difficult for us to manage them in, a, in, a, in an extreme way, I feel as if we're, we're losing some of these protected areas 
more quickly than we can ever replace. And if we're not going to maintain that, who will? And maybe by being part of the university we have, we can take the liberty to say, that's something that we're not going to compromise. So I think that's an important discussion point. Yes? Do you have any ideas about the newsletter which the friends uh, receive? You mentioned that there are 20 plus uh, research projects going on here and very rarely, I think in the last three months, uh, we read about one graduate student doing X. We read about one professor getting some national awards. And then, you know, usually there's something about native plants, but, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a whole page of activities which is important. But I think it's not serving, you know, you know, I got excited about finding out these new worms that are here that, you know, are they going to be in my garden? Exciting. But uh, otherwise, you have to have something exciting to talk to other people about. Do you know that, you know, right. the Arboretum is doing this, there's somebody doing that? Right, right. Um, well, I think it's, a, it's an interesting time right now at the transition, whoever would be in the director position, because um, I think reimagining the relationship with FOA in general is going to be very positive, Getting kind of getting back to that situation that was part of the picture when Greg Armstrong was the director, where there, it was more directly connected in terms of initiatives, uh, donor, and dollars. And um, the other thing that we can add in is that we've just added, uh, finally filled the vacancy in what we call our editor position, a communications person, Susan Day, who's actually sitting behind you, who has some fabulous new ideas about communication. <laughs> And um, and ways that we can we can try to figure out what, what sorts of communication do people want. I think probably they could they would welcome other activities being highlighted in that, and we have an opportunity to try to think more about that now. Great. Yeah. I'll invoke Aldo Mule. Yeah. <laughs> And only because his legacy is internationally famous. And with it comes the stature of the Arboretum in many people's eyes. At the same time, I thought you gave a very excellent description of the Arboretum as a unit within the university, as part of the community, and part of what we all have learned to uh, enjoy in southern Wisconsin. I'm wondering how you see the Arboretum uh, in the context of that broader uh, reputation that Leopold has left and whether or not there's a role for the Arboretum on a, on a larger stage than Dane County in southern Wisconsin? Two responses, I think. Um, two different things. Uh, I think that we, d we have tremendous history and a mystique that is incredible in the world of restoration ecology. And I didn't fully appreciate that, even though I knew about it, until the SER conference was in town. Um, and so that's something that we, we could potentially take to a larger stage. But again, we have to think, OK, we're, we're, I'm not exactly sure what you have in mind. Are you talking about um, training courses? Are you talking about world domination? World domination. <laughs> no, we're a small unit. And we have to think about, we have to make very specific choices. This is a facet, really interesting idea, um, and would be really interesting to discuss. We'd have to think about how to do that. Now, one way that we could do it, it occurs to me now, since I met with Paul Robbins of the Nelson Institute this afternoon, is by connecting to our like-minded organizations on campus and outside of Wisconsin to make some kind of connective network that would be able to, to bring some aspects of that back into the conversation more frequently or offer opportunities for stud, particular study or that, that sort of thing. Um, the other side of the coin is, although we, we depend on that, and, we, and of course it's, a, it's the part of the history that I connect most directly to just because long before I knew anything about being interim director of Arboretum when I came to Wisconsin, I cannot tell you how many copies of Sand County Almanac people gave me because I wasn't from around here and I needed to understand. And it, it really is 
a meaningful part. But as we go forward into the next component, I'd like us not only to be known as the birthplace of ecological restoration, theory and practice, but also that we now are a preeminent living laboratory research facility, providing information about how to pre about what res restoration means in the modern world. I think that's the conversation that we should be the most involved in, whether it's thinking about climate change or other insults. Um, that's probably more the direction I would see us go. Any other questions? So, Dr. Pollock's been at this all day. <laughs> we still have dinner ahead of her. So, uh, <laughs> any other, one more question before we go? Otherwise, we'll just wrap it up. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you.